It's a Tuesday, February 15th, and it's time for your Bobby this Today Morning News Update. The Bobby this Private Sector Association welcomes the latest adjustments to the COVID-19 directives. Over the weekend, the Minister of Health and Wellness, Ian Goodenagel, announced several changes, including the discontinuation of the nighttime curfew. BPSA President Tricia Tannis believes this is a clear indication of the government's intention to manage the situation much differently than before. We believe the beginning you know, of the end uh, of the pandemic. Uh, I don't think we're at the end, clearly. Now, I do think that um, it, it, we need to look now at how we actually manage um, the pandemic. And I think the, the removal of the curfew is the first signal that we are intending as a country to, to manage it differently. Um, to acknowledge that it is not necessarily an issue of cases anymore, um, but we need to probably just start monitoring, obviously, the mortality, or mortality rates. Um, something that is highly infectious, but has no mortality, and you know, there towards more of a, a common influenza or a common cold type status. And, and the world clearly is, is at the stage where it's saying we're no longer uh, willing to, to suffer, you know, disruption to our lives, disruption to our economies, you know, for, um, you know, for a disease that it is increasingly less, less fatal. That is not to, not to say that we have to still constantly be aware of those who are vulnerable amongst our populations, that, but that perhaps the, the management of the virus now speaks to how do we really try to isolate those persons who are at higher risk. Um, whilst letting the, the other, um, the majority, all of our majority of those of us who are not at higher risk go about our, our daily life. The BPSA president, however, acknowledged that the road to recovery for the sector would be long. We believe the beginning you know, of the end uh, of the pandemic. Uh, I don't think we're at the end, clearly. Uh, I do think that um, it, it, we need to look now at how we actually manage um, the pandemic. And I think the, the removal of the curfew is the first signal that we are intending as a country to to manage it differently, um, to acknowledge that it is not necessarily an issue of cases anymore, um, but we need to probably just start monitoring, obviously, the mortality, or mortality rates. Um, something that is highly infectious but has no mortality, you know, tends to veer towards more of a, a common influenza or a common cold type status. And, and the world clearly is, is at the stage where it's saying we're no longer uh, willing to to suffer, you know, disruption to our lives, disruption to our economies, you know, for, um, you know, for a disease that it is increasingly less less fatal. That is not to, not to say that we have to still constantly be aware of those who are vulnerable amongst our populations, that, but that perhaps the, the management of the virus now speaks to how do we really try to isolate those persons who are at higher risk. Um, whilst letting the, the other, um, the majority, all of our majority of those of us who are not at higher risk go about our, our daily life. The Alliance Owners of Public Transport has welcomed the ease in the limits on the carrying capacity after months of lobbying government for permission to do so. On Saturday, Minister of Health and Wellness Ian Gooding Edgel announced that PSVs were allowed to increase their capacity from 75% to 100%, but no passengers will be allowed to stand. AOPT's Communications, Information and Marketing Officer Mark Ains tells Bobby this today, workers in the sector were overjoyed, having endured two tough years of restrictions. The last two years have been particularly debilitating for the sector. So this is a welcome, uh, welcome change for which I am glad and I really welcome it. But of course it has to be handled with sensitivity because this COVID-19 is still with us and we do not want to be reckless going forward with this because the question of wearing the mask is still a requirement and I will still encourage all the workers in the sector and commuters to appropriately wear their mask that is over your nose and your mouth to help mitigate, mitigate against the spread of COVID-19 because COVID-19 has not dissipated and therefore we cannot let our guards down because now we have some relaxation of some of the measures. 
The projected May to February start of this year's sugar crop is now off the table. However, sector officials say talks are continuing. Emmanuel Joseph has been following other developments and files of this report. Senior officials of the state-owned Barbados Agricultural Management Company said Monday that negotiations are continuing with the various unions and no new date has yet been set for the crop to start. Chief Executive Office of the BAMC Orlando Athlete declined to provide details of the latest state of affairs, but has said preparations at the lone operating sugar factory at Port Vale, St. James, are going well. Chairman of the Barbados Sugar Industry Limited, Mark Seeley, also declined to provide any specifics about the negotiations, only to say things are close. I think people are working very hard. I, I know BAMC is working very hard to get the factory ready in time for an improved start date from last year. Now, bear in mind, we started on March the 15th. It really would have been, it would have been the best thing to start on February the 15th. Mm -hmm. We would like to start um, at least by, you know, February the 21st. That wouldn't be any, any later than the 21st, you will start to in our opinion, have a challenge, um, you, the sucrose content will start to diminish. Sili is also hoping for an early pay settlement, pointing out that his union is scheduled to meet again on Tuesday with the BAMC management. President of the Sugar Industry Staff Association, Dwight Miller, also said ongoing negotiations were at a sensitive stage and he didn't consider it appropriate to comment further. His union represents the supervisory staff in the sugar industry. Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe and keeping this in mind, Make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To news from other region, health officials in Guyana say active COVID-19 cases in the country are on the decline while the number of people seeking to get vaccinated against the virus is increasing. More from Gordon Mosley of News Source, Guyana. There are now just over 1,000 active COVID-19 cases in the country, with less than 70 of those persons hospitalized. The latest figures released by the Ministry of Health reflect a sharp decline to what existed a month ago, when the country was dealing with about 9,000 active cases and a steady increase and spread of the virus. In the past month also, the Ministry of Health has seen an increase in the number of persons seeking first and second doses of the COVID-19 vaccines. On average, we did 453 uh, first doses per day. And uh, in terms of second dose, we were doing about 588 second dose uh, per day. Uh, booster doses was close to 682 booster doses per day. Over 62% of the country's adult population is now fully vaccinated, but there is still a large number of persons who are still to return for their second dose shots. And the Ministry of Health is encouraging persons to ensure they get the second dose. There is a difference between first and second dose, and that's one of the areas that we'll have to work on because people would remain partially vaccinated if they only got one dose. And therefore, we want to encourage persons who receive just one dose to make sure that they get 
uh, the second. On the international front, officials at another international agency issued a warning on the situation in the Horn of Africa. Director of Emergencies and Resilience at the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, Rain Paulson, says the drought situation in the region is now sitting on the brink of catastrophe. He was speaking following a visit to the region. We've been sounding as FAO together with partners the alarm since the middle of last year about how the situation was unfolding. And we are uh, most definitely now sitting on the brink of uh, catastrophe. We have a window uh, to the middle of this year, to June, uh, which is um, uh, a very time-sensitive narrow window for uh, urgent actions to scale up to pre prevent a worst-case scenario. Agriculture needs uh, a lot more attention. It's central to the survival of drought-affected communities. Drought response, preventing famine, requires the right set of actions implemented at the right time in a drought cycle and it is absolutely indispensable that we have joint multi-sectoral uh, interventions across four key life-saving uh, sectors food security nutrition water and sanitation and health and all of them need to go together if we are going to prevent uh, a desperate situation from uh, unfolding they have a multiplier effect uh, on each other in uh, a positive sense so this is very much the situation uh, as we face it now. Time is running out, and so we have this window through to June. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.